so what's going on guys I hope every single one of you are having a good day uh, I know I am it's really nice weather outside here in Virginia so to jump straight into this vlog this is gonna be just a little quick video um, <clears throat> a couple weeks ago I made a video uh, telling you what parts you needed for the coyote swap and I'm still getting messages so hopefully I can answer these questions in this video what did I have to do to get the coyote motor to run in this car so you can get a coyote motor to run in a fox body uh, 94 to 98 which is an SN95 and the car that I have which is an 01 is a SN95 as well so the big question today in today's video is what did I exactly have to do to get this motor to get this car to run and drive it every day like I do well to answer that question question for today's video is what did I exactly have to do to get this coyote motor to make this car run so there's not a lot of things that I really had to do to get it to run because it's like any other swap there's a few things you're gonna have to do modifications and stuff like that nothing's really straightforward in a swap whether what motor it is if it's an LS maybe a 2JZ or like mine the coyote so the biggest thing that I really had to do, um, I'm going to start off with putting the motor and transmission in. So when I put the car together, I had the transmission and the motor bolted together already with the clutch and flywheel and all that. And we took the transmission and the motor and put it through the engine bay, of course. And I didn't lift the car up on the rafters or anything of the garage and then drive the car, bolt everything up to the K-member and then bolt the K-member and everything up to the car. So the K-member was already bolted to the car. So we just went straight in. First, when I did that, I had the Moroso oil pan and I thought you needed it with the tubular K-member. When you actually only really needed to run with the stock K-member and I didn't have the stock K-member. So the oil pan was kind of too large for it and it was kind of hanging all over the um, K-member. So I went back to the stock oil pan and it cleared really, really well. It got hung up a little bit, but once you move the motor forward and backwards, all that jazz, it got it to slide right in, uh, bolted the 4.6 motor mounts up and then bolted the headers up. To get the headers on, uh, we had to lift one side of the motor and put that header on and drop that side, bolt that side down, and then lift the other side up and bolt that side down. Now, from the headers to the X-pipe, the exhaust is always a big question, uh, whether if you're running a full catback or dumps or if your car is gonna be a daily driver or if your car is gonna be a drag car. The dumps are the easiest because you can just have custom piping in an exhaust shop or you can even buy, you know, just some piping with the mufflers and turndowns. But I have a cat back that's two and a half, and that's the BBK headers and the X-Pipe are three and a half. I mean, three inch. So you're going from three inch to two and a half. So I had to have a reducer, which was a three inch, going into the cat back that's a two and a half. So it's initially a three inch flange going into a two and a half reducer. And that just had to be welded and a little fab work for the exhaust. Some people 
have fit the stock battery box up under the hood still. I use the UPR uh, relocate battery kit. So my battery's in the trunk. I'm just running a stock Mappa battery that you can buy. You can buy any, you don't need a special battery to, uh, and there's another company called Power by the Hour. You can either run a power steering rack or a manual rack, steering rack. I have the power steering rack uh, straight out of the 4.6, the stock one that I've always had with this car. Stock power steering, nothing special. Uh, the alternator is spun around. You have a couple options. You have, you can run the 4.6 alternator like I am. They have the kit for that. And then they have the boss alternator and Power by the Hour makes both kits. They have all the brackets and everything. So all you gotta do is just look them up and give them a call and they will get you straight forward and everything you need for the swap because they specialize in coyote swaps they actually have a i think it's a 96 or 97 uh, track car that is built and ready to go that is coyote swaps so they do all this stuff like that um another big thing that you do need is a tune that is one of the biggest needs to get this car to run right or any coyote swap car you, a tune helps dial in everything, of course, but the tune that they uh, they send with the ECU, uh, the control pack from Ford, is it's just your basic startup tune, really. Initially, it's when I when I called Ford and for really some of the questions about the tune or whatever that they sent with it, and I was told it's kind of their performance pack tune that you would if you were to go to a dealership and say that you want not just a stock tune you want a little more out of your car they would give you that but the tune i'm tuned by vmp it's an email tune on 93 you have different options you can go 85 93 91 whichever gas grades you have in around your local area the majority of people have 93 a lot so that's what i'm on all the time daily driving and the tune will dial everything in and get the car to run where it should so you're not running lean you're not running rich you're not going to mess up anything tune is the most important thing besides suspension always do that and another question that i always get is the ecu from the old wiring harness to the new control pack you do need to save your wiring from your old harness from your old 4.6 you will have to wire some wires splice them together not a lot you don't need everything but just keep everything and uh, there's directions online of what you need on websites and if you buy the control pack from Ford or whatever vendor sells it for Ford uh, you there's a paper that tells you what you need to do what you need to splice and what you need to save uh, for the 4.6 on the on the cluster gauge I'm using a stock cluster gauge the only thing that does not work is the RPMs now race pack uh, air motive I'm going air motive I've bought a couple gauges so far the gauges are they end up being really expensive over time so they make an entire dash kit overlay that resembles your stock at dash and then you put the little pod gauges in it looks a lot better than factory yes um, the water temp and the oil pressure are running off the 4.6 sensors so I'm running 4.6 sensors on the coyote motor to be able to tell the water coolant temp and the oil pressure so i hope these these answers kind of help you guys uh, with your questions i hope i answer them as best as possible as i could if you still have questions you can always message me my and the link in the description or my social media facebook and instagram and that's going to do it for this video guys i will catch you next time have a great one